let me now take this opportunity to ask uh, the, pri the Deputy Prime Minister from Somalia, Mr. Jama. Your Excellency, President William Ruto, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, fellow leaders from Africa and around the world. On behalf of the President of Somalia, Dr. Hassan Sheikh Mohamud, and the people of Somalia, I would like to express our heartfelt thanks to the President of Kenya for convening this very timely inaugural African Climate Summit. Ladies and gentlemen, across the African continent, from the southern tip to the northern edge of the Sahara, from the Sahel to the Horn, the impact of climate change manifests itself in some very similar cyclical and destructive patterns. And it's this common threat that brings us all together to form a unified voice championed by President Ruto. Ladies and gentlemen, Somalia, located in the Horn of Africa, is acutely aware of the profound weight of climate change vulnerabilities. Rising temperatures are very common in Somalia, and the predictions state that by 2040, 2060, the temperature would increase by 1 to 1.7 degrees Celsius. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to highlight a set of variables that interact together and render the African states extremely vulnerable and their communities. The era of climate change has become synonymous with the nexus of food insecurity, forced migration, and displacement compelled with conflict. It, is, it has been widely stated here today that over 150 million Africans are subject to food insecurity and hunger. Around 60 million of those are in the Eastern Africa and the Horn region and 5 million in Somalia. Since much of the African countries are not industrial states, climate change impact affects us at our most vulnerable places. In places like Somalia, pastoral communities and agrarian communities are the most hard hit. So today's very proud livestock herder or a farmer could overnight find themselves in an IDB camp outside the big cities, becoming another added number to climate change vulnerabilities. I would like to allude to an element of combating climate change that has not been widely discussed in this uh, plenary today, and that is our coastlines and the blue economy that President Gailey spoke about. Somalia has the longest coastline in the mainland continent, but overall in Africa, our blue economy is underperforming and rising waters, water levels, uh, extinction of coral reefs and mangroves and biodiversity is an imminent threat for the ocean gives us more than 50% of the oxygen that we consume. Ladies and gentlemen, Somalia annually loses a revenue worth of 300 million to illegal fishing. And I think investment in the sector will allow us to enhance our potential to cope with climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, the final question I would like to raise is how well are the African states and societies situated to compact climate change. I think that point has been very well articulated by the previous speakers. The African states have a unique set of challenges that puts them in a precarious situation. Limited fiscal space, changing global markets and volatility, lack of access to finance at a reasonable rate, all these elements compounded and the climate change diverts the African states from investing in development and sustainable development goals and on a regular basis focus on humanitarian interventions. Such an approach should be abandoned and we must look for more meaningful engagement. Ladies and gentlemen, when droughts hit California, you do not see the death of people. But when droughts hit the Horn of Africa, you see both the death of people and the loss of livestock. 
So climate change affects Africa in some very profound and immediate ways. Finally, I fundamentally want to agree with the argument put forth by President Ruto that Africa should be and ought to be part of the solution to compact climate change. We have a very young, vibrant population. More than 70% of our population is young. We have 60% of the world's potential in terms of renewable energy. We have the greatest potential for agriculture and livestock. And instead of the world feeding us, Africa has the potential to feed the world. But for that to happen, there needs to be justice and reform in the global financial institution. If we cannot access finances at a reasonable rate, a rate equal to others, then for us, bringing about another transformation would be an elusive goal. I'll give you the final example of where Somalia stands today. We are fighting a war against Al-Shabaab, Mr. President. That's why our president could not be here. He is in the front lines. We are finalizing a debt relief HIPIC initiative that took us almost a decade, a serious fiscal limitations. After we complete the fight against Al-Shabaab and we finish our debt relief program, we will find ourselves in a very interesting situation. Do we go for concessional loans to invest in infrastructure, in human capital, in sustainable development goals, or do we deal with the droughts? We almost averted a famine a year ago. Ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, in the last 30 years, Somalia has experienced 18 droughts, two famines, and equal number of floods. In order for us to develop the resilience and the mechanisms to cope with those things and empower our resilient citizens, we ask for international financial institutions to be reformed, adaptation programs to be increased, and Africans should have a common voice so that we can take it to the next scope. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Prime Minister. And I want to confirm as a neighbor where the whereabouts of uh, the President of Somalia and give him our regards.